Yeah, we've had bears, we've had dogs, we have had some cats now. Um, I don't have a cat. Tuesday. I don't fill the vase with water, nor do I cut each stem an inch diagonal. The flowers wait on the side in their plastic sleeve. An hour goes by, and then, an hour, and then another, and the sink cupboard yawns, a long, aching eyes to the ceiling yawn. Pilot, next door's cat, peers through the flap. I don't throw the wet sponge, the dishcloth, or a slipper. My feet are bare on the tiles. I don't care if I, if I catch a cold. The kettle sighs as Pilot pours into the kitchen. He taps like a kuracha as he claws towards Sanchez's plate. I don't stop him. Sanchez has left for Ecuador, slipping back now and again to quiz me and nip my toe. Um, Virginia Woolf, um, when she published her short stories, she bought her a cat with the um, with a fee, and it was a Siamese cat. Um, this next poem is called, called From the Writing Room, and it's in the voice of her cat. But why does she disappear for hours, days, years, without a blink, to her silver corners? I arrive and leave and still catch her sighs as she tidies her upright pencils. Standing, musing, while I rest, yet sinking a little when I inquire about supper. Oh, what misery. The times waiting, meowing in vain. And love, only the sound of it today. The dish clinks on the tiles. The shoe brush shunts backwards. The cushion sneezes under me. This morning, as I minced around Fitzroy Square, in between the chop chopping of people, she became indistinct, blended so not mine. Moments were lost in the pigeons cooing. The quickness surged through me and all the alleys ever loved bird on my tongue, and I was ready to leap. But I'm held by the slant of her neck, her reading mouth, the way her sounds and words feed my stomach, replacing gut instinct with verse, tailbones with verse. Sometimes I offer to share my most precious thoughts, truffles, treacle, tenderloin. She listens, deeply unable to catch my drift. I always wanted to have an invisible friend when I was growing up. Marcus and me. Marcus and me like to wear three jumpers to school. The teacher tells me to say the word warm at least seven times a day. But Marcus says that warm is too small a word. It moves away too quickly like a mouse. Marcus says that anemia are little creatures like lice. He thinks he's caught them by sucking the daisy foam off my wallpaper. Mum might have it too. Her pale face and kisses taste like copper coins. She doesn't mind Dad sparking. Will it kill her like her too tight shoes? Or an asthma attack? Marcus sometimes hides outside my parents' room, his ear to the wall, his finger scraping the paint off the radiator. When Marcus and me have an earache, we go to my mum and kneel like a donkey, my head sideways on her lap, catching the splashes, one drop, two drops. Mum rounds up the wild hair around my ear, but her thumb can't shut out the thunder.
This last poem was inspired by um, a stay in hospital, as well as remembering a song lyric from um, Suzanne Vega's Tired of Sleeping. From the closed unit. Mum, push me out, wake me, take me home. The cold space in my bed is the ice cap of the world. The seals are being stroked, then clubbed. The gulps are torn, their wailing hardens. Oh, Mum, the dreams are much too sad. It's just for that, it's just for that. It's just for that. I see women dragging their soon be born babies to hell. They grab them back and throw them in the air like dried seeds twisting out of sight. Oh, mom, the dreams are much too sad. It's just that time of sleeping. A life is a life. Love quenches these mothers. Behind their eyelids are pictures. Oh, mum, my dreams are much too sad. It's just that, it's just that, tired of sleeping. After evening meal, where must you leave? And do these hospital corners. Oh, mum, my dreams are much too sad. It's just for that, it's just for that. I'm tired of sleeping. The salt marks on my lips show I'm immersed on marsh water. Oh, mum, my dreams are much too sad. It's just for that, it's just that. I'm tired of sleeping.